folks, and welcome or welcome back to NTI's Japan Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Ziv Nakajima, I'm again. And this podcast was brought to you, among others, by Emil Gorgis, a Tokyo real estate agent who specializes in serving international or mixed nationality families looking for the perfect family home. So Emil's an Australian. He's been living here in Japan for the past two decades, eight years of which he's been actively buying, selling, and managing real estate properties in the city on behalf of his own family and a great many happy clients. And he also acts as a mortgage broker on behalf of his clients. So his company has a dedicated loan officer in many of the Japanese mega banks. And if you're a regular listener, you probably already know him from our JREP, the Japan Real Estate Experts panel sessions. So you're probably already aware that the man is an absolute fountain of wisdom on all things related to real estate in Japan. And in particular to family homes, the greater Tokyo metropolitan area and mortgages. And most importantly, he's incredibly generous with his time and advice, which he's more than happy to provide at no cost or commitment to anyone asking. So if you've been thinking about buying your home in Tokyo, but you've been sitting on the fence for a while, or if you just want to have a chat in English with a real expert, drop him a line on emil.gorgis, that's E-M-I-L dot G-O-R-G double E S Emil dot Gorgis at Tokyo Realty dot JP. Hit him up today and start exploring your options. All right. So for today's episode, we've got three members of the JRA panel, Matt Tracy and yours truly. And we talk Akiyas, Japan's abandoned or vacant homes in the countryside, but not only. Um, we look at some case studies, uh, what can be done with them. We review the options available for purchase generally on the market. Uh, we watch Matt do his thing, show us some good old fashioned Akia hunting live, or at least the online side of the hunt. And then we zoom out of the actual property research and think about what exactly is the right mindset in which one should approach these Akia projects. We talk about the potential um, emotional, physical and financial benefits and what it takes to make that Akia dream come true. Um, whether it's marketing, capitalizing on tourism trends, uh, domestic or international, and um, setting up your perfect um, home away from home or off the grid home or countryside home, whatever the case may be. And then speaking of relationships, we also segue a bit into working with Japanese realtors or property brokers, the proactive versus reactive ones who are out there and how to foster good relationships with the good ones among them. And then how they and we as property professionals manage client expectations and also a little bit how, about how these expectations differ between Japan and other countries around the world. So really good chat, casual in nature, but quite deep, I thought. Hope you enjoy it and I'll see you again on the other side. Welcome back to the Japan Real Estate Panel, uh, Real Estate Experts Panel. Yeah. And yes. today, this is, the, uh, this is the format of the panel in which we can talk about shit without Emil telling us that we're not allowed to talk about shit. <laughs> <laughs> we can go edition. off topic. <laughs> Special edition. Yeah. <laughs> Special uh -huh. 34 degrees Celsius edition. How are, uh, how's the weather where you're at? Uh, so I've actually been for the last month basically constantly up in Gunma near Maibashi, which is precisely where the hottest weather is. Fortunately, I've been in the mountains near rivers, so that's good. But um, yeah, it's blisteringly hot outside of Tokyo as well. So right now I'm currently in Tokyo. I got a couple of customers, um, like a father and son, a single customer, but they're, a, you call them a, a pair, who are looking for a... Um, a property in Gunma Prefecture that they can, um, they're, they're fine with them, um, you know, slightly dilapidated because they're DIY types and they oh, want I know to- Oh, um, I, I know one that you might, that okay. might be useful. Gunma's great. Yeah? I, I want Gunma, people to go to Gunma so bad. Gunma's awesome. It's mm -hmm. kind of like Nagano, but it's closer. Yeah, they want a home and a shop. They've got a business. Yeah. I can, what I, it is, they told me something to do with manufacturing, so they need space for a little workshop and stuff. Mm -hmm. Doable. No, yes, doable. there's someone I know that, that he's got a he's got a lead on like a six bedroom jobby in Gunma, so and it was just too good not to um, pass up. So I'll put a pin in that one. I'll, I'll yes, uh, please. I'll, any uh, so any yeah any listings with you know sizable land and a reasonably sized house, please send them my way. It doesn't have to be in good shape. Okay. Well, I'm structurally sound, but not... 
you, 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 you made me curious. Let me see what I can find real quick. Oh, that's why I love talking to you people. I just love looking at weird shit. You love looking at weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine just went and bought a, um, uh, one of those, uh, um, uh, what was yes. and ski out places in Niigata. Oh, probably, oh, oh Niigata, huh? Mm. Just finalizing one of those ourselves. Yeah. The, the kind of prices that we were talking about, like 20, 30,000? 20, 30,000 dollars. Dollars, dollars, yeah. No, no, she actually got, she ended up getting hers for under a mil. Wow. Where was it again? Um, Niigata. Near, near, uh no i think just walking distance to, from the prince something or other i don't quite know yeah hmm. mm. yeah so so actually you know what he's got, he's got a client looking in the in the area who's unfortunate well maybe fortunately but extremely picky so we haven't yet you know stuck a fork in it <clears throat> but they are curious about the yuzawa area seems to be kind of reasonably priced actually so yeah, it's just that a lot of these places have a like a really big monthly. Like it's you know you you might spend under a mill, but then you're going to be paying the uh, the body corporate, which is you oh, know. you're talking about under a million yen. I thought you were talking about a million. Oh US. yeah, no, under a million yen. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, whoa, yeah, well, yeah those, no, those are being that's... sold. Yeah, those are being sold because the owner needs to pay three hundred bucks a month, and they're just not up to it. And... Right, right. Correct. Right. Yes, and also if you're not using it, then it's just pretty silly. So. And you can't um, rent them out to anyone because the owner unions have got to stick up there behind. So no, you can. What you hey, can Ziv, Okay, give, can me, I... give me more details on what that person wants in Gunma. Um, I will bring it up as Tracy speaks. Go for it, Tracy. Oh, I was just going to say that actually, if you create a, a private um, members club, yep, uh, you you're able to rent, like you're able to let other people use it. Mm. So you can if you create a private members club. And you have a, you know, a like a like a group of people who who want to like like a yeah, like fractional ownership. Yeah, but you man you own it, you manage it, and then yeah, that's the thing. Buy. It's always it's always doable. Like you know, members club, friends and family, you can call it whatever you want. But then there's no Airbnb. There's oh, nobody managing. You no booking platforms. It, no, you can't put it out there. I mean, it is not going to be passive income for you. Like exactly. it's not going to be put it out on the on the World Wide Web and you're going to get bookings. It's not like yeah. that at all. You have to really have a pool of either past guests or um, people who are interested or, mm. you know, um, in my friend's case, she she has a big connection to the base. So these are sort of service people like you know, so that's a like a little closed loop almost. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's you can cool. and you can totally rent it out. I mean, she's not really that's looking at it as a profit yeah. center. She just wants to have a have a free place that she owns. It doesn't cost her anything, and you know, we'll pay for a whole bunch. Of, like we'll you know give her a little bit of cash, but it's not going to be. It's not yeah. a income producing property as such. But that's a, that's what I'm that's what I'm interested in. No, that's doable if you're if you're you know happy to be hands on. So Matt, they're looking for, um, if possible, flat area, not in the forest or woods, elevation under 200 meters to avoid um, you know, salty, snowy streets and so forth. Um, surrounded by rice fields could be nice, space enough to park minimum four cars. Um, shed okay. barn with minimum space of 35 square uh, meters uh, okay. is a big plus. At least two separate rooms to function as bedrooms. Um, and either two stories or a house with a stretched out floor plan. And the less neighbors, the better. What's their budget? Um, six and a half million ish. Okay, hold on. And again, the uh, condition of the house, as long as it's not falling apart, is probably not a big issue. Uh, do they have any like land size requirements? Anyway, I mean, you said like parking four cars, but like, do you have a number? Um, above 200 yeah. meters squared i'd say yeah something like that so they said the house should be minimum 75 80 square meters and the land should be uh, two three hundred square meters mm. at least i mean the more the better they wouldn't mind mm. so 
Oh, we're getting uh, we're getting a live recording Ooh. of Matt doing. Oh my this goodness! Thing. Oh my goodness! What is this? <laughs> What's that? Is that that's the, the song from uh, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas? What is this? What is this? See, this, is, this is a really good video because it shows this is how we do things live, right? And this Yeah, is, th you know, we should be live streaming this. Hold on. Um, and, you know, and you can actually, uh, you can screen share if you want to. You can see, like, you know. This is I've just allowed you Oh, my God, and it's in Kidu. Oh, ho, ho. so Kidu is really interesting because it's right east of Maibashi. Um, there, it's kind of a hipster joint, not too many. Well, that's a bad word. What's the good word for hipster? Um, it's, it's up and coming, up and coming. There we go. Uh, sorry, There's is this the three. hipster How telling us that word? hipster is a bad word? Yeah, right, <laughs> it is. <laughs> not being totally serious. Now. Um, so PDU is really interesting though because it's it's got some cool like people, I guess, who are there. I know some people who are up there. It has three, count them one, two, three. Uh, craft breweries in it and it is also on an express line straight to Tokyo that has a special connection to Wi-Fi. Oh they're, they're German um, so the craft brewery play thing would be a big plus I think. Yeah uh, Ziv, let me let's see it is how big is it um, so number one price uh, let's see, actually, number one, land size is 434.8 meters squared. The building itself is 191.2 meters square. It is a one, so it's it's one story. Um, 505.9 mil. Uh, it's address, well, it's in Kidu. I'm not going to give you the precise address because that's special. <laughs> that's proprietary. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have to pay to unlock that um, unlock that level. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess. Hold on, here. Let me do this. Super you can screen. Quickly. You can screen share. Well, I'm, here, here's what I'm going to do because I'm so fucking paranoid. Uh, I'm going to screenshot the pictures and then I'll share my screen of the screenshots. Okay, got it. <laughs> There's only four images, so I can't exactly be sure what's. Well, actually, five. And if you um, want to block, if you're going to screen share the screenshots. Yeah. And if there's anything you want to block out, then do that now. Like just grab a, you know, on your put it into put it into preview, and then just cover up what you don't want to show. I don't think I've got anything that damning open. <laughs> I don't think they're not um, they're not Akia hunters in the sense that they'll need deep investigation of anything. They're just looking for a bit of a bargain. So I doubt they'll. Be well, no, specifically. So like because we are partnered. And anyway, like, just let me do it this way. Yep. <laughs> uh, let's move you over here. And then where did you go? There you are. Okay. And let's do. Okay, let's do that. Just tell. Ziv's special. It's been. Now, where are you today, Ziv? You, you're in a different location from where you normally are. No, no, we just rearranged the office because we rented another office upstairs. So we took the big table upstairs and we put a bunch of small tables in the office downstairs. So I'm just facing another way in the same office. That's all. Oh, okay. <laughs> you made it look different, but it's actually not. Yes, I, I ran, like before we recorded, I quickly ran and constructed that little cupboard behind us so that it looks different. Where did the document go? Shit. Come on. Here you are. Okay, let's do that. Let me go in here. All right. <clears throat> ready to screen share. Uh, share screen. Are you ready? Rumble. Uh, share. Am I, yes, it does appear that I am sharing my screen at this point. Correct, yes, no problem, yes. Uh, all right, here, actually, let's do it in preview because that makes it easier to shuffle. Come on, there you go. All right, so here's the exterior. Yep. Uh, you said they wanted space for like, a, uh, like, like crafts and whatnot, so there's that. Workshop, yeah, but is that the main, that's not the main house, that's a separate shed, is it? Uh, this is something that I will have to, I would have to figure out. I do not have, yeah, I don't even have. Is this off an Akia bank, is it? No. no, it's a, it's a realtor, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an Akia, but it's not off an Akia band. Yeah. Um, there's this. So these are the only images available. Yeah. That looks like a separate. I I'm guessing um, it might be separate, right? Uh, yeah, who knows now? Yeah, I can't tell. Let's see. That looks like it's one. I like how I'm like staring into the camera. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing because I'm on the phone too. Fortunately, the camera is not on me at that. I don't know, me. That looks like one. And then, like over on the left side, there's that gate. Yeah. I want to say that's like the driveway. That looks like a single unit. Maybe. Um, but yeah, this from spending about 30 seconds looking into it, this is what I can tell you exists in Kidu, which is a cool place to be. Um, and for 5.9 million. So. And we just, we talked last time about how the difference between how people like us see the raw bones of a place mm. compared to a buyer. And if you can, you know, cause we're looking at this stuff every day and, you know, we're just so used to seeing what it is now. And also, you know, with the, we've seen what can, can happen with properties that have been Potential, similar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and so we know what's possible. So it is actually easier for us to see the potential. Well, so the nice thing about this this spot is um, it's obviously being managed. And I can say that beyond the shadow of a doubt, because if you looked, I don't want to share my screen again because it's a pain in the ass. Um, but if you look at, number one, it's relatively clean. So there you go. But number two, also, if you look at the walls, you can tell it's a relatively old building. Yeah. But the walls uh, have been lift like everything on the walls has been lifted relatively recently because you can still see the imprint of everything. Yeah. Um, so it's obviously an older building, but somebody is doing something to it often enough that it is kept in this condition. Yeah. Um, so again, for 5.9, like, you know, if, I mean, really, if you want like some luxurious Tokyo apartment, guess what? go buy a luxurious Tokyo apartment. Like that's the solution to what you want. <laughs> uh, different buyers have different needs. So exactly, exactly. would you, um, so if they were interested in looking at it or purchasing it, would you be then putting your agent in touch with us for us to communicate with them? Because I mean, they're, they're okay. Of course they're okay to pay a normal agency fee, but I don't think they'll go much beyond that. Yeah, I mean, I just want to, you know, like kick them over our, or maybe that's a discussion for us to have uh, kind of privately about how yeah. to do that. Um, but, oh, okay. And looking at this too. So the Madori is listed, not to go back into shit, but the Madori is listed as being Kojo plus eat, like, like what, Sumu Iru, how do you pronounce that? Um, Joey, I think. So like workshop and living and residence. Yep. And it was built in Showa 43. So that's what? So, uh, 43. That's 43. That's. Yeah. The, see, what we're doing right now is one of the reasons. 1970. 1970? Okay, uh, great. You should have just. Three. Yeah, 43. I'm 45. Oh, no, okay, I'm 40. Okay. No, so it's... Uh, 60, 64. No, 68. No. 68. Yeah, 68. Yeah. And it, so far as I can tell, it has not been renovated. But again, I mean, literally, I'm looking at what? One, two, three, four, five. Well, if it's already designated the uh, workshop and residence, that means that at least we know zoning restrictions are okay with the business, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't um, know. About you know what? Send, send, send me an email about it. Uh, and because, like, normally we just work directly with clients and, like, you know, we hook people up with stuff and whatever. Send me an email. So about I, it. I, I've got some, I've got, I'm a bit curious actually about what you guys think about what is the state of the supply of real estate across Japan? Yeah. So um, there are a lot, you know, everyone's talking about how. Japan is dying very quickly because all the old people are dying and there's a whole bunch of Akia that don't, that really do have an owner, but they're technically being unused. But if people like people are buying up the Akias, what's, what's happening with that supply? I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, there's a lot of crap out there for sure, but the stuff that's habitable or useful, is there, 
you know, is the supply, is now the interest in Akia bringing the supply and the demand closer together or is, is it still um, it's, accelerating it's the other way? It's from our point of view, um, we've just onboarded a few clients actually with some stuff that I'm not yet ready to kind of talk publicly about. Yeah. Um, but pe what people are starting to realize both domestically and internationally is sort of what I keep harping on about is like use case. Stop thinking of it as a house as a house, but like what can you do with, you know, basically, a, I mean, call it a box or whatever, but like in a specific environment, understanding that environment and then figuring out how you can leverage those assets, those environmental assets to your advantage. Um, and both domestically and internationally, uh, people, investors, I would call them, um, are finally starting to come around and realize, wait, holy shit, there's like an entire country of untapped, per, a specific, a few specific types of untapped um, mm -hmm. all the resources uh, that occupy. I think the confusion that a lot of people get into is um, like if somebody contacts, um, Matt or somebody who deals in specifically Akias, and they're in the fr mind frame of I'm looking for a cheap holiday home. Right. That's that's not the place to go. Like Akia is not a cheap holiday home. No. It's a potential. It's a project. It's something that you need. Well, to I mean, they can be. Make no mistake. They they definitely can be, but it's not 100 percent of the time that they are. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, kind of like what I just did right now for the given the clients given uh parameters what fits that sometimes you get a hit sometimes you don't but you have to be able to dig through parse through all of that data in order to determine whether hmm. it's viable. So there just there doesn't seem to be from what, where i see there doesn't seem to be any shortage of housing or buildings to buy or land to buy there's not, there's not. There's and no i mean I'm, I'm kind of an extreme example but like just anecdotally just through the business that i conduct and because of that what i know <laughs> like why is anybody building anything? <laughs> exactly. Well, we know why. <laughs> well, yeah, we know why, but from a strictly like logical point of view, there's, I mean, there's stuff everywhere. Like there's yeah. no reason whatsoever. There's except no shortage of housing. Yeah. So no, it's just, and I've, I've been watching a couple of YouTube channels lately, actually, because um, people have been renovating Akias and actually been like, uh you know documenting their progress and uh there's someone some i just went and saw one the other day actually in person and like it is a completely new house what she's what she's changed it to it looks amazing so she bought something in tokyo for that couldn't be rebuilt and you know was pretty grim but with some fairly you know some from some smart renos She's actually now got a short-term rental property that is going to really give her good cash flow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay for her, pay for her kids to go through uni. So it's like it's really cool. It's totally doable, um, both in the city as well as I mean, obviously outside. But the, I mean, the city is a little bit more, especially Tokyo, is a little bit more difficult. It sounds like one of the spots that your associate picked up. I want to guess is with like on one of the like uh, Shitamachi side streets. No, it's in Yoyogi. Really? Okay. Ooh. Very nice. Very nice. It was very a bit good. of a rare find, but then she had real estate agents who knew what she was looking for. And, and she actually wasn't looking. It was just the real estate agent knew her business, knew it because she's a client of mine. So, and I do a lot of work with her with the short term stuff. So, um, and well, she's not a client of mine anymore. She's actually off on her, like off on her own. She's doing her own thing, which is fantastic. Um, and, um, and, you know the the real estate agent who she dealt with originally you know just found this place and just gave her a call and said hey why don't you look at buying this and she went okay and so she found the money and did it so there was a i mean there there are some smart real estate agents who keep their clients in the back of their head and go yep. uh you know so there's not many of them to be fair there's not many no, not there's not all. many that use their own initiative that will you know, if they come across something, they'll go, oh, look, I've got a person who, who really could benefit from this. So, and then to the have the people can, jump on it. You can, with some sort of massaging and, and relationship nurturing and, and constant communication, you can turn a lot of them into those kinds of agents. Mm. But the typical, a lot of time we get Westerners that come in with this, um, all right, I'll just, hey, you, 
Sick, go go get me five properties. I want this, 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 and that, and keep searching until you find. It's not gonna oh, like no. you gotta wine and dine and, and and like you know do something, create a relationship and put it in place before you can kind of figure out who might be the agents that might be able to. Well, do that. or or that is true. Or you could just have a different business model where you get paid to do the work and then do the work. <laughs> <laughs> Would be your business model. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Well, I mean, that being said, occasionally, you know, we've, we've got long-term clients who, you know, pick up, you know, they're always interested and in something. If I stumble across something just accidentally, I'll flip it over to them. And it's like, hey, sure, sure. No, I mean, but Matt, I mean, also the fact that you're in the position to do that. We work with um, our favorite agents in this way too, but the reason we can work with them in this way is because we've worked with them in the past oh, and yes, we have exactly, the relationship. Exactly, exactly, exactly. They know that we're going to we're not just like some you know out of the blue tire kickers you know sending them on a wild goose chase and then disappearing right like they know right, right. and they know that if you know if we've got a request from a client and we've actually contacted them and asked them to look for that that means that that client has already paid someone and is right. a serious client right yes is a verified lead let's call it exactly. qualified lead let's say yeah that sort of relationship building absolutely must be done from the consumer point of view though yeah they're like that's not gonna yeah i mean it's kind of hard like even that stuff that you that we that we were talking about before we press uh record sometimes it really does feel like you're sort of shoving the square peg in the round hole and that's kind of like it's a little frustrating because you really do feel like you're pushing shit uphill but um and you know you've got to be assured of like getting the return on the end otherwise you just you know you know was it sissius who was just like constantly rolling the ball up the hill so yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's a lost cause it's a lost cause you know do your best but at some point you just kind of got to be able to decide like okay this is it's good if we can uh, sift through that and like not actually enter the relationship if you know try to figure that in advance we've fired our first engaged customer for the first time a couple of months ago and Congrats. we were very very close to firing a new one just a couple of weeks ago but they've shaped up like they they recognize that if they're going to push it further, they're not going to have anyone to serve them. So they're they're good. Sounds like them. you really did. You you went above and beyond the call of duty. There, <laughs> <laughs> you got them into shape. <laughs> yeah. We interrupt this broadcast. I always wanted to say this. We interrupt this broadcast to tell you about Tokyo Family Stays. They're a short-term rentals company in Tokyo, and they offer a home away from home experience, which is just perfect for remote working, quarantining or if you just need summer quiet to hide away from the world. So they offer a variety of options for families, for corporate relocations, or simply if you're transitioning between homes in Tokyo. Now the properties are super comfortable, tastefully furnished, fully equipped with all amenities, and they accommodate up to 10 people. So really the only thing you'll need to bring with you is your toothbrush and maybe a change of clothes. They've got fast, unlimited wireless internet, dedicated workspaces, and fully equipped kitchens. And they're just a delight to stay in. A fantastic alternative to Japanese business hotels, which if you've ever stayed in one, you probably know they're tiny, they're noisy. Fine for a night or two if you're on your own, but long term or with a family, you'll probably feel you're in a jail cell very quickly. So if you want to give yourself a sense of space and freedom by renting a real home with comfortable Western beds, including all the necessities like baby bedding, children's toys, high chairs, you definitely want to reach out to Tokyo Family Stays. They've been at it for over a decade. They're a fully licensed minpaku or short-term stay operator. And as a special bonus for our viewers and listeners, they're also throwing in a breakfast basket upon arrival for anyone who books and mentions the Japan Real Estate Podcast or NTI. And not only for guests, if you're a property owner, you've got an investment property that you want to tweak for higher profits or a holiday home that you want rented out when not in use via short-term stays, drop them a line today, see how they can help you maximize your property's income. And again, as a special bonus to our viewers and listeners, they're also offering a free audit of your existing short-term stay listings without any obligation whatsoever. So feel free to reach out to them at tokyofamilystays.com. Well worth your visit. And again, if you're in the market for a family home in or around the Tokyo metropolitan area, Emil's your man. Don't be shy to reach out to him as well at emil.gorgies, G-O-R-G-E-E-S at tokyorealty.jp. That's pretty awesome, actually. So is it just because they had unrealistic expectations of the Japan market or they're just being, you know, difficult? 
Not, not of the market itself, but of the way things work here, right? So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like they, they send you an email with, you know, 15 different properties and, uh, you know, we can't find, can we get the full addresses for all of those and organize the viewing for all of them next week? And like, no, no. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to happen. <laughs> if that's what you're expecting, I don't think I'm going to be able to meet your expectations. And here's how it works here. Right. So, yeah, but, but they're good boys now. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, as as Westerners, we you know it, you know you have to learn to put a lot of your Western expectations, leave them at the leave them at the dock before yeah. you come in. So I mean, you've got to bring your chutzpah with you. You know, bring your chutzpah into the country, which is probably a missing, um, you know, a missing gene in a lot of cases. Oh yeah, there's room for creativity and absolutely, but absolutely. But the yeah, thing, but like, you need to know the rules in order to don't break <laughs> them. And just exactly. Them. <laughs> exactly. Right? exactly. I was saying to somebody the other day, or I think it was maybe in an interview. I can't remember, but um, there's. I, I'm not saying like a lot of Japanese buyers will buy a property with very few questions asked. Like they actually, here's the listing. The agent said it's this and that. And they said that, you know, there's no more information available. So, okay, I'll make my decision and I'll buy it or I want. But I'm not saying that, you know, that we as foreign buyers shouldn't be asking the questions that we're used to asking overseas. We definitely, sh there's nothing wrong with wanting to, you know, to do your due diligence properly, but you got to know how to do it, like <laughs> how to speak to the agent or the seller on the other side to actually try and get them to get that information for you. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, very true. Very true. Yeah. Mm. So what, it, what, what are your favorite YouTube channels, Matt? Are you watching things like people who are renovating Akias or... Um, I don't oh, watch any of it. Sorry? <laughs> I don't watch any of it. <laughs> Tokyo Llama. Go go watch Tokyo Llama. He's a good guy. Tokyo Llama? Um, What's that? Uh, he's, he's one of the bigger... We did an episode with him on his channel. Um, he bought a place, I think in Ibaraki, is it? And he's been renovating it for a little bit over a year. Maybe it's, cl it's probably closer to two years at this point. But, you know, like a proper do, you know, Kominka fixer-upper, um, all DIY. Um, really kind of doing it one step at a time. Very like concerted, well thought um, effort. I was about to say plotting, but that's got a negative connotation. I mean, he's, he's doing it correctly and understands like, okay, this is a proper renovation. Oh, 200,000 uh, 200, subscribers. He's big. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's pretty big stuff. Um, cool. We did an episode with him last August. I believe. Yeah, it was on my birthday last year. Oh my God, that was almost a year ago now. Are you August too, Matt? When in August? I'm August second. Okay. Yeah, Your you're birthday. Not, you're not a cool Leo. Okay. Yeah. No, no I'm the weird you. Leo that like now I'm not a Leo, but I was. <laughs> I'm August. Oh, on six. leap years, on leap years, maybe you're a Leo, right? Yeah. Well, no, I'm, I'm 86. So, well, yeah, I guess I'm on leap years. I'm August six. You know. Hey, I'm, August second. I accept. I accept. Bitcoin. You know, I accept Ethereum. I accept Bitcoin. I accept, I accept, I accept, I accept <laughs> promises of. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say something rude there, but I stopped. Yeah, good bottles thing. of yeah. wine. I thought that was your thing, Tracy. Bottles of wine. Bottles of wine, absolutely. Um, yeah, chocolates, flowers, no problem. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we got Matt on August 2nd, you on August 6th, and me on August 17th. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? We're yeah. all August? Yeah. This so we need what we need from our subscribers and viewers is a gift box containing... A bottle of wine, some um, quality whiskey, chocolates, and what What do you want, Matt? I mean, we were having a conversation about horror movies recently. I want the most independent, unheard of VHS tape of horror uh, that, that can possibly be found. You actually have a VHS player? Are you serious? Oh, dude, like this is one of the many fun things about Akia and when you're able to just grab whatever is in there. You want a VHS player? I can get you one for free. I have a friend who said who likes to explore these, and he said that um, if you take anything, you will be haunted. It's occurred to me, yes. There's like <laughs> there's like a lot of home movies that I've definitely held and thought, hmm, maybe I could watch this. But then I was just like, you know what? That's a little bit over the line. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just found Tokyo Lama. He, it's, um, that looks really cool. You didn't know, I thought everybody knew about Tokyo Lama. No, no, that's that's a really, but that's a, 
there's some people that I'm also following on on Facebook in those sort of building and renovation groups that I think we're both we're all in. And um, there's some people doing some really thoughtful, you know, they're doing it piece by piece, and some really good talent. Like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, obviously the the you know the the carpentry is a, is a like is a hobby, um, yeah. but they're being very intentional and making things really beautiful. So yeah, I don't really have the patience good. for that. I want it like I want it now. So yeah, um, I mean, you can do the now thing, but Tokyo Lama does an excellent job with. I mean, it's it's like a better homes and gardens kind of like or what what's the, this old house? Is that the name of that show that's been around for however many yeah. decades? I mean, is it fast? Hell no. no. Um, but is he doing it correctly? Is he learning as he goes? Is you know like it's it's I mean it's an excellent example of like the lifestyle approach to renovation. Project of yeah. love. That's all we keep talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. he, he does well, a very a- good job of of, of that. There's a guy who who I was speaking to recently. He he's a he's a Scandinavian model, I think, um, and he's doing his own renovation. Oh, the gardener. Scandinavian? Uh, I thought he was Swedish. Scandinavian? He's a model of you know, and he's do, and he's got a ton of. I mean, I guess because he's a model, he's got a ton of subscribers. Oh, what that the the what uh, the the guy who just moved here? I don't want to say his name. <laughs> oh no no no! Oh, you, the, 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 the he's the uh, P P yeah. P P P. No 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 no! no not him! Me. No not him! This is this is someone who's been here for a little while and actually speaks Japanese and he's okay. been renovating an, an Akia in the middle of Tokyo and YouTubing it as well. So okay, um, uh, and he's managed to pick up some uh, uh, some um, he's Swedish. Yeah, I mean, I think he's picked up. Like, I think he's picked up a couple of endorsements from I- ikea and places like that to sponsors to yeah. on his channel the so. wacky thing about it that i mean one of just there's you, you can think about renovations in ikea in any number of ways but like the other things too guess what that person is getting a pretty decent workout by renovating right so there's like a health there's a physical wellness kind of aspect right. to it as well yeah, right. agriculture and uh, building is two of the industries that will definitely give you physical benefits. Yeah. 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 So it's, yeah. it's great seeing people document. I mean, that's a, that's one of many use cases. Uh, Ziv, as you pointed out, it's kind of the slow burn, like it's going to take some years. Um, but that is one of the many use cases for Akio, just what Tokyo Lama um, is doing. Uh, kind of the world Japan version of this old house, you know. Yeah, I'm and, just trying to find Al, it. I think, sorry, go Tracy. I'm just trying to find it so that um, I can show you, but uh, no, I can't find it right now. Hmm. Now that the um, borders are slowly creeping open, a, a lot of these places can actually finally be utilized as Minpaku or Airbnb or guest well, houses. So it's, it's kind of interesting that you say, I mean, you're correct. I'm not disagreeing with you, but uh we also have or i also have clients um that i'm consulting with tourism clients saying like oh boy when that inbound comes in you know the gates wide open it's, i'm like uh you don't know when that's going to happen and what if and when it does happen what it's going to look like like it might be open like it is now but yeah. north korean style um, <laughs> no, no, so that, I'm, not, I'm not saying like the floodgates will open, but I'm saying at least there's some hope for these places now, right? Well, yeah, and so, but the thing is that I've been consulting on pretty extensively over the last like two months, which is one reason why I've been so busy, um, is these tourism companies just, boy, oh boy, do they have their eyes set on inbound tourism. And I come in and they're like, oh, you know, when, it, if and when it happens. And I come in, they're saying, Azabu Juban, like go after the domestic foreign market that is right in front of you and underserved right now with the cash to spend stop waiting for inbound and do domestic and they're like wait what i've never thought of this it's like yeah there's an entire treasure chest living in your back you know your backyard go after that but when you say domestic are these because i mean domestic foreigners usually have japanese spouses and so they can they can hook you know they can hook into the normal japanese channels and the japanese are not going to come and stay with foreigners only so much because if you i'll need to tiptoe around this a little bit um but if you think about your typical international couple 
that is wealthy and lives in Tokyo, there's a certain set of uh, kind of, maybe not requirements, but like expectations that are kind of like baked into what that couple looks like. And if that's what they want, the baked in product, then they can go get it. It's Karuizawa, it's Atami, it's Hakuba, it's Niseko, it's those places. If they want that, not that hard to access. If they want anything outside of that that they're comfortable with, nobody caters to that at all, right? Well, your um, typical Japanese mean paku out in the countryside, there's plenty of places that are already established that can take guests, no? Yeah, there's there's many of them, but Tracy, as I'm sure you very well know, a lot of the time, the more rural and more like mimpakui and weird you get, the worse the marketing gets. And so those things exist all over the place. Part of my, not even my job, just part of my passion about all of this stuff is getting the word out about these radical spots that are difficult to find, mm -hmm. right? But they're difficult to find. And they frequently shoot themselves in the foot, just countless, just infinitely it's like yep. oh my god you have such a great product please let me do your everything let me do your operations because you are awful at it <laughs> <laughs> tell us what you really think Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm pretty blunt about a lot of this stuff at this point because i've seen so many excellent mimpaku and not airbnbs but like mom and pop yeah, mom and, uh, yeah. and breakfast kind of spots that have an outstanding product with outstanding service, mm -hmm. but they're just so bad at advertising themselves that they end up, you know, at it, look, at, send know. them my way because that's what I do. I try to teach people how to market, like, and I don't, not talking marketing. I try to. They I don't listen, to. Tracy. They just don't the listen. idea of learning, of admitting that what they are doing is not effective and is in fact costing them money. Just getting them to understand that is a massive hurdle. I'm trying to flip them over to you. But it depends what, the, but the, honestly though, it does depend on their their why. Like what is their reason for existing? Are they wanting to make a fortune or are they wanting a lifestyle choice? So that's a, that's a decision that you can't help them with. I can't help them with, exactly. but I can help them find what their, what their goal actually is. And then when they, when they figured that out, all right, well then what's the action plan to, to make that goal happen? But that goal setting piece is completely missing. Yeah, um, yeah. That, and I don't think I don't think they're in a in a in a in a mind frame to even look at what their goal is because most of them, if I look at the places where we've stayed in the past, it's um mom and pop is the right word, and they've been doing it for maybe a couple of generations already. And you know, the the places on that little hand-drawn map that visitors to the local information center get and that's how we get our customers. And it's been like that for decades. And, and we're not that change. Yep. Yeah. And, so and then, but a lot of people, and, and a lot of people who do work in this sort of short term rental, when you talk about raising prices and you say, look, you could be charging a lot more, you're offering value. You rather, and then, but a lot of people are very, feel very awkward about that because they don't want to be ripping people so off. We, it's like, we've actually got you, the be, you charge the value of what you're delivering and not the cost. So, because- so we've, yeah. we've got the opposite story of that right now going on with the property that we're working on, a Ryokan, uh, 14 rooms, uh, two separate onsen. Uh, it is still operational. The bank is like, they're, they're in arrears at the moment. And the, and the major reason for, or the reason for that is that the person in charge of it thought that they had a much more expensive value proposition than they actually did. Yikes. Mm. Right? And so they Ouch. thought that they were super fancy and they were super fancy, except in a very unreachable location with awful marketing. And so they okay. just ran themselves into the ground. Right. And so yeah. that is, can also be the case. Sometimes it's the opposite case, like what you were just talking about, which is Oh, geez, you don't even know what, this is a diamond in the rough. Like, just polish this up and it'll be amazing. And then what I was just describing is, oh, wow. Like, yeah, it's nice, but you didn't really think about anything, but, you know, spending a lot of money on renovation and not how do people get here or cost. I've got a friend who's, um, who's doing inbound tourism into Saga Prefecture. So that's up down here in Kyushu. And um, He's saying that because the government is offering uh, subsidiaries and grants to people who will build tourism attractions, whether it's a hotel or an onsen or a yokan or what have you. So 
a lot of like local tea farmers or people who've had a plot of land and, and you know, never did anything with it because which they inherited are like, wow, the government's paying 30% of construction costs. So let's build a hotel and people will come. And no, <laughs> they this all the time. It's, it's, and same thing, even just with renovations of a, an already established Mimpaku or Airbnb or short term stay or something still doesn't fucking get it that they are not advertising themselves and they do not have the throughput mm -hmm. to make sense of any expenditure. And they just say, oh my God, it's 70% at some of them. So, you know, they renovate all of the bathrooms and just say, it's nice and fancy. Thus people will come and it's like, what put a big sign outside and somebody will drive by and come stay. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. It's like, no, you're just, you're, I mean, this is, an ex this is the lost cause that I deal with constantly. Right. And unfortunate as it is, those are the situations that I don't care to deal with anymore. I want to work with organizations and people who will move the ball forward such that in a few years time, this stuff catches on and those lost causes can finally convert. But if yeah, I no point to uh, convince the unconvinced, I agree with that 100%. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, what? What? Is it this is such a high quality production, Zim. <laughs> Bring a goat, Matt. Bring a goat back. Bring a goat Matt, back. back. I need to. Uh, I need to do a plug and an endorsement and a thank you because Ziv, for a little bit, like a year or so, I was rather curious about those uh, uh, NFC uh, business cards, but I didn't do anything. And then you were like, "Hey, I've got one. It's pretty cool." So I got the expensive one. I can't oh. see it. I can't even pick it. this out. Uh, no. Then, if you want to scan the QR code, you can you can do that too. So, no, send me that because I actually I, I I want one. Actually, I want a couple. So it's awesome. Thank you, Ziv. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What, are they, what are they called? Vice. Uh, v one C one C E is uh, the, right. the uh, Vice right. with the one instead of an I. Yeah. Yeah. They um, should be paying us for. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll reach out to them for sponsorship because they've been uh, they've been getting it. a lot of publicity on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's an excellent product. I was using. I use it all the time now because it's so easy. Yeah, um, I just wish I could convince more. Like whenever I meet a Japanese person who's an entrepreneur or independent, they're immediately signing up. But if it's somebody who works for a company, like my boss will not go for that. Yeah, well, then you, don't want to the work people that. that you scan, are you able then to? to know who scanned it so that you can then have a follow, like then you can come and put them into your CRM so that you can follow up with them. And it's like, I, I don't I'm sure that you, there's something to be done. I'm still guys, this is what you need options. to do. You need to add this to your CRM so that you know who you've spoken to about what, and it gives you a to-do reminder list about who, who you need to speak to after the event. Well, you'd need to get their permission though. There'll be privacy concerns there. So you giving them the card means that they want to add you to their context. Yeah, list, Tracy, you're, just, you're just ruining all the fun. That okay, sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get them to add the feature in the next release. All right, well, thank you for your time, folks. Yeah. We shall uh, see you again it's soon. As the, stay cool, we stay hydrated. Stay, it's a very, yeah, very hot right now. Stay and buy Akia. <laughs> buy Akia and stay, come and stay in Tokyo at a short term rental. Go to Fukuoka no. too. It's a great place. All right. See you soon. Later. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. So there you have it. As promised, casual but deep. I think we touched on quite a few macro and micro topics related to Akia's directly or indirectly. I really enjoyed this chat. Hope you did as well. Now, before we go, we're also, as always, going to tell you and also link to our other sponsor's website. That's Hiroshi Shimizu, immigration lawyer and administrative scrivener. If you're thinking about moving here on a more permanent basis or you're already in Japan on some sort of a temporary visa and you want to switch to a longer term or permanent one, or if you're considering setting up a local company or a branch office of a foreign company and you've got any sort of business or visa related inquiries, or even if you just want to find out what your options are on any of these topics, feel free to contact Hiroshi Shimizu. You can find him at japanimmigrationexperts.com and he can help you set up a company, apply for any kind of visa, or just provide you with the best advice and extremely affordable consultation related to these topics. And he's already done that for many of our listeners. So feel free to reach out to him. Again, that's japanimmigrationexperts.com and you'll be well on your way. And that's it from us for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Japan Real Estate Podcast. 
do share it with your networks and please let us know what you think so leave us a short rating or review on the iTunes store on Spotify or just drop us a line in the comment section of wherever you might have found this episode we love hearing from you hope to have you with us again next time and until then have a great day or night ahead Yoroshiku. Thank you.